Good morning. Welcome to Morning Devotions with Pastor Mark Driscoll from Oakdale Free Methodist Church here in Jackson, Kentucky. And it is the 17th of October and it's uh, being recorded at 6.30 in the morning. We meet here online at Facebook Live uh, on my, my news feed um, every weekday morning at 6.30, Lord willing. And uh, we're going through the Gospel of Luke and when we get through with that, we'll pick another book and go through there one. And so if you want and you're looking for some Bible studies and things like that, you can go on my YouTube channel. And uh, I have some books that we've already preached through, um, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, some of these different ones, Hebrews. Um, if you'd like to, to do some of those, maybe do some Bible study in that way, feel free to share them. Feel free to show them, you know, if you have a group that wants to do a Bible study and go through a book of the Bible. If it's of help to you, um, feel free to do it. Now, most of them are a lot shorter than this one. This one's already up to uh, 78. This is number 78 from the Gospel of Luke because there's a big book. And so, uh, wait till I do Matthew one of these days. But anyway, um, so anyway, I just want to invite you if you ever want to use those. And uh, th that's what they're there for. I put them online so that people can learn the Word of God. And because uh, that's, that's you know, we're, we, are, we are saved by the living word who became flesh and he is discovered in the written word the the uh inerrant word of god and uh, it's god breathed it's not the opinions of man it is the word of god himself and so he has spoken and told us of his son and how we can know him and so uh get into the word of god get into the scripture glad you're here this morning i hope that you have your bible with you um, and I hope that uh, maybe you'll write down some things if you feel like they're helpful to you. Um, and so, anyway, glad to have you here. Glad to be with you. Let's pray, and then we'll get started. Father, we are thankful for this day, uh, for your love. Lord, we're thankful for your kindness and your grace, for the strength of your name. Lord, thank you for the gift of prayer the gift of your word, of your church, of the Holy Spirit. We're thankful, Lord, uh, for salvation, for forgiveness of our sins, and victory over sin. We're thankful, God, that you're our provider, our shepherd, our king. In all circumstances, Lord, we can always look to you. And so the nations may tremble, the nations may uh, rage, but Lord, you're on the throne. You're our Lord and our King. And we worship you and we honor you. We praise you, Lord, for who you are. Now, Lord, this morning, um, we ask you to help us learn some more of your word, that we may live by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. It's good to, good to be here with you. Good to see a Reginald Hicks this morning. Glad you're on. Hi, how you doing? Um, <clears throat> listen, I want to talk to you from Luke chapter 17. And I want to tell you, here's the message today. You don't need more faith. There it is. Uh, you don't. And, you know, I find that one of the big stumbling blocks we have in life is when we try to pray, we always undermine ourselves by saying, well, I just don't have enough faith. I, 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 and I have people talk to me that all the time. Uh, several years ago, I remember a, a woman coming into my office uh, just needing to talk about God. I had questions about Christianity and wasn't yet a Christian. And, and uh, this person was just seeking and saying, you know, uh, I want to believe. And, and we talked. And I said, you know, um, I said, everything comes by faith. And everything comes by faith. And she said, well, I don't really have much faith. And I said, thanks for your honesty. But I'm going to tell you, the great news is you don't need a whole lot. Just take what little you got and work it. Work that little bit that, you know, if, if it feels like just a th string of, th of faith that you're holding on to, use that string. It'll become the most powerful string you ever saw in your life. Uh, you know, and, and so that's the truth today, is that many of us <clears throat> need to understand that the issue is not do you have enough faith, but what is the quality of your faith, and is your faith... Uh, well, even even saying that makes it puts it off on you. And see, that's that's the 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 fallacy there is that everything is about you. I've seen people who can't get healed because 
they they cut themselves off and say, well, I don't have enough faith. And then they beat themselves up when they're being prayed for. I just don't have enough faith. I don't have, do I have enough faith? Do I have enough? And it gets all about them, right? And it becomes all about them. And and faith, the object of faith is not you. Uh, and see, that's that's where a lot of people mess it up because they think if you have enough faith, you can do anything. Well, Jesus never said that. And I'll tell you what he did say. Uh, let's look in verses 5 and 6. Um, Jesus has just finished telling his disciples, say, look here, you better not be causing people to stumble because if you do, you're in trouble. And that's, that's, the, that's the summary of what he said in verses 1 through 4. And he said, look, if somebody sins against you, go to them, get it right, forgive them, and move on. And, uh, and so the disciples responded in verse 5. Listen to this. The disciples, the apostles said to the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. And I don't, you know, I don't blame them. My goodness, if I hear something like that, and Jesus lays down something like that and says, look here, you're responsible for how, how you treat people. You're responsible. Your actions can actually cause somebody to stumble in their relationship with God. And, and that's a serious deal. And uh, forgiveness is the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It, it is the cornerstone. And so you, you've got to forgive. You've got to be a forgiving person. And so uh, looking at the world I'm in and the, and the things that happen and the things that we go through, I, I could hear myself say, oh, God, I don't know if i got enough faith for this. Give me some more. Please give me more. And we've all asked for more faith, haven't we? And, and faith can grow. And, and, and it does increase. And uh, the Bible talks about faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of Christ and, and how the, uh, the testing of your faith refines it and makes it purer. And, uh, but see, here's the thing. They said, increase our faith. And they say what we all say. Lord, I just, I just need more faith. I don't have enough. I don't have enough. But as I said a minute ago, when you talk like that, you're putting the emphasis in the wrong place. Uh, the emphasis of faith is not the person who has it. It's in who the faith is put into. I've come to understand over the last 40 years of ministry that, that even the weakest, listen to this, even the weakest, most, uh, most just difficult faith, immature, will save if it's grounded in the person of Jesus Christ. You know, you don't have to be the Apostle Paul to go to heaven. You don't have to be uh, some big-time theologian to go to heaven. And and sometimes we put things on people that just aren't, aren't true. And we act like people have to be this perfect, supersonic bastion of faith to go to heaven. You don't have to be Abraham or Sarah to go to heaven. Uh, you just have to believe. And, and, the, and the belief has to be real. It has to be authentic, genuine. Um, even the smallest faith will save if it's grounded in Jesus. And I know people that barely uh, know any Bible verses at all. They know enough to say, Jesus loves me, and that's about all they know. And uh, those people are just as saved as the person who, who can articulate the great doctrines of the faith. That person is just as saved. The person who, who barely has enough vocabulary to articulate, Lord, help me, have mercy on me, a sinner, uh, is just as saved as the nationally known uh, high-powered preacher who's out there telling the, the doctrines of the gospel uh, and written 50 books. You know what I'm saying? Because it's really not the amount of faith that, that's required here. It's the, it's the quality of faith. And, and faith uh, comes from God. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But look, in fact, let me, let me show you how Jesus responded to this. When they said, Lord, increase our faith, um, they were saying, I don't think I have enough. And Jesus did not answer in terms of quantity. If you'll notice his response had nothing to do with more faith. He did not say, okay, guys, let me tell you how to get more faith. He didn't say that. I mean, that would have made sense, right? What did he say? He said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Jesus is talking about quality here. He's saying, look, if your faith, the, the, the potential of a mulberry, of a, of a mustard seed, mustard seeds are tiny. They're, they're, they're really tiny. 
And he said, if you had the faith of the quality of a mustard seed, because see, that mustard seed is full of potential. That mustard seed is full of life. Even, and all it has to be is planted in the right place to grow. You see, there's the deal. It's not if you get a whole bunch of mustard seeds, you can make a mustard seed tree. It's if you get it and you plant that in the right place, the power that's in it, the potential that's in it, the everything that's in that seed, is, is that seed's got everything it needs to produce life. And it becomes a tree that birds come to rest in. And so if you had that kind of faith, you could say to this tree, get up and move. Now, now let me say a couple things. Uh, about amount of faith. For example, let me just tell you a story or two. I remember several years ago, I got a call um, late one night, or early, uh, yeah, late one night. Uh, a man who was related to a member of my church was dying. He was in the ICU in Lexington, and, and the family was had been called in. That that was it. There was nobody was trying to get him better. He was uh, not fully conscious. He was in ICU. He was unresponsive. And, and they just, they had decided, let's call in the family because this man's going home. And um, I, they asked me as, their, as the pastor to go see him, and that's what I did. And I went up, I got up at, you know, five in the morning to drive out and to get there and, and uh, got to the hospital and met the family, ministered to them. And uh, I went into the ICU room with this man, and I, I felt like, you know, uh, I did not know if this man was a believer and the indications were that he had never made a profession of faith in Christ. And uh, so I, I just went and sat by his bed. And he couldn't talk to me. He couldn't look at me. He couldn't respond. And uh, so I, I just uh, got up close to him. I said, God, I don't even know what to do here. And the uh, first thing I did was whisper in his ear. And just in some vain hope that maybe, you know, he would hear something. And I, I had no way of knowing um, and I just said, I said to the man, I said, listen, um, God loves you. He has a, he has a call on your life. He, he saved you. Jesus died for you. And I shared the gospel with him. And I said, you can pray right now in these final moments and receive him. And I don't know if you can hear me or not, but I just shared the gospel with him. So anyway, um, I didn't know if he was even hearing me. And then I did, you know, I just prayed, anointed him with oil, you know, as you pray for the sick. And I prayed for him. And I, um, I didn't expect God to do anything. I mean, I wasn't. I mean, there are days when I expect miracles, and I've, I've seen them. I was not expecting anything. And I, I just did my duty as a pastor. I prayed for him. I anointed him. And, and I was just going to go on home. And, and I went back home and did my stuff and... It was just a sad morning for me, and uh, come to find out, uh, the guy makes a miraculous turnaround within a couple of hours, and, and they write on his, his chart, unexplained, he just turned around and came back, and he told his family that he heard me share the good news with him, and he prayed in his spirit to receive Christ while he was in that condition. And um, it was such a, it was one of the coolest things of my life. And uh, he got baptized. He lived several more years. He's with the Lord now. But my faith was nowhere, guys. Um, I wish I could say I marched in there all full of faith. And I just was doing my job. You know, I was just like, you know, let's pray for him. Let's. Let's share the gospel with him and just kind of leave him in the Lord's hand. And, and God did a miracle and um, not only save his soul, but let him live a few more years. And uh, that was such a one of the most powerful things for me. And it brought this verse home because my faith was tiny. I mean, it, I wasn't even close uh, to expecting anything from God. And uh, what God did with a tiny little faith, I had enough faith just to do what I knew to do. That was it. And um, let me, hold on, excuse me. Uh, oh boy, this is going to make for a great video. But anyway, I just, I just, um, I, I was so blessed by that. And, and I learned that 
it's not about how much faith you've got. It's about who you've got your faith in. You see, the only thing that mustard seed needs is to be planted in the right place. If you try to plant a mustard seed on the, on the, on the highway, it's not going to produce anything. If you try to plant that mustard seed in your refrigerator, it's not going to do anything. But you put it in the soil, and it's going to grow. And you know what? You're, Jesus Christ is, is the soil. And you put your faith in him, and it's going to grow. And even if you have just a tiny amount, if you, you barely have any, he's, he'll use what little you've got. And there are some of you right now who, who really feel like your faith is weak. I mean, you just feel like it's, it's all you can do to put one foot in front of the other. And, and you, just, you, just, you just really wonder. And you've got lots of doubts, and you've got questions. And, and some people maybe have tried to disqualify you. They say, well, if you've got doubts, you can't really come to God. Well... I know in James it says whoever doubts won't receive anything from God. And the point is, if you choose the path of unbelief, there's not much God's going to do with that. But when you plant faith, even if it's like you don't even know what's going to happen, and you're just saying, God, I'm going to do what I know to do. And I'm just going to do what I know to do, and I'm going to trust you with the results. You know, God will bless that, and he'll honor that. And there are times when that's all you can do. And the apostles were just at a loss. Now, the other thing I want to say is that, that when Jesus uh, talked about planting, telling this mulberry tree to be uprooted, sometimes uh, we get a little wonky with that, and we, and we think it's all about rearranging the, the, the physical landscape. Oh, moving mountains. Well, God's got the mountains exactly where he wants them, and he's not likely to pull up your tree out of your garden and stick it somewhere else just because you told it to. The, the point is is the, the power of, of faith in prayer. And you can speak with authority um, in prayer. And, and some of us, one of the things that, that faith brings with it is authority in prayer. And uh, for example, you have authority over sickness and you can pray in the name of Jesus over that. Um, you've got authority over uh, division in your church and you can pray in the name of Jesus for that that division to go you, you you've there are some people who are oppressed demonically and you've got authority in the name of Jesus to command that to stop and uh, you know and so you have dark thoughts that steal your sleep at night you have the authority in the name of Jesus to command the enemy to be silent and to stop harassing you in the night You've got authority, and so the thing is, is are you planting that seed? Are, you've got the faith. You've got enough faith. Look, if you had enough faith to receive Christ as Savior and Lord, and it really doesn't take much to do that. It, it really doesn't. You know, you've got enough faith. You don't have to be, you know, John MacArthur or Paul Washer or whoever your favorite preacher is. You don't have to be those people to have faith. You can have, there, I, I, I read somebody referred to this last night. Uh, the story of the blind man. And, you know, the, the blind man got healed, and, and he wasn't even sure what was going on. And <laughs> he didn't know what was going on. And Jesus just put mud on him and said, okay, now go wash. And he's going, what in the world is this about? And then he, he could see. And everybody was wanting to question it. You know, there's always critics that want to question you. There's some people that they're scared to death. There's Some people are so religious, they're scared to death for anybody to get saved. And... Somebody gets saved, they want to interrogate him instead of bless him. You know, they, they want to Let's make sure you're as saved as I am, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's people like that. You just have to deal with them. But, you know, um, some people are just so religious or miserable. But, but here, here, that's another sermon. Um, the blind man, he was being harassed by everybody. Instead of them saying, oh, what a wonderful miracle, they're saying, well, 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 well how did it happen? What was what, 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 you know, and why, why are you walking around with that smile on your face. What's your problem? And uh, even his parents disowned him. I mean, they wouldn't even, like, stand with him. Jesus, uh, the guys come up to the man and say, you tell us how this happened. And he said, look, I don't know how it happened. And he said, all I know is I was once blind and now I see. I was blind and now I see. And that guy over there, I don't even know his name. Um, that guy, he touched me and, and I... I don't even know who he is. And then Jesus showed up later and said, hey, I'm, I'm the guy. Do you believe in me? He said, yeah, I believe in you. 
right? And so that was it. I mean, that was the extent of his theological upbringing, right? The, the extent of his theological training and, and, and was that somebody touched him, got his eyes dirty and wet, said, go wash, and you can see. And he said, you know, that's all I need, right? He didn't have a whole lot of faith, but he had enough because it wasn't about the amount. It was about the quality. The quality was he planted it in the right place. He believed in the Lord Jesus. And I and I, I worry sometimes about people who make salvation harder than it is. Discipleship is hard because you have to die yourself, take up your cross and follow him. But salvation is so simple and so clear and anybody can walk in. Uh, the smallest child can believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I know some of y'all don't like that, but it's true. Jesus said the kingdom of God is made of children and that you have to be a child before you can get into the kingdom. And we turn it around and say, no, you've got to be an adult. Well, what do you, what, do you think Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about? Listen, you've got to be like a child. He said, unless you enter in like a child, you're not going to enter in. And so here's the thing. Um, We've got to turn this thing around and stop telling people they've got to have a Ph.D. in theology before they can go to heaven. And uh, we've got to stop telling people they, they can't connect with God unless they believe all of our pet doctrines. You know, we've got to put it, listen, we're all going to get before the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in doctrine. I think it's important. I think we need to study it. And I've corrected false doctrine. I believe in that. And I, and I get that. And I and I teach doctrine. And I, and I know that's true. But sometimes we, we turn it into this granite wall that people can't get through because we tell them they've got to be as perfect as we think we are before they can come to Jesus. Jesus takes us broken and then he begins the process of healing us. And you might come to Jesus with a few misconceptions and then but you trust in him and you know he's the son of God. You know the essentials. He's the savior of the world, died on the cross, rose from the dead, coming back. You know that and that's all you got. Well go with that. You, you go with what you got, and he'll give you more, right? Jesus said it. He said, whoever has, more will be given to him, right? <clears throat> but we've got to allow him to start where we are. And and so anyway, prayer is like that. Prayer is so powerful uh, when we plan it in the right place. And so that's the key right there, is uh, if you're planting your faith in yourself, you're missing the point. That might be why you're not getting any breakthroughs. Because you're saying, do I have enough faith? Am I faithful enough? Am I praying right? Am I doing it right? Am I getting it right? That sounds more like superstition and witchcraft than faith in Christ. Listen, he'll take the most broken faith. Trust me, I know. He'll take the most broken faith. If it's grounded in him and who he is. Not in some cheap imitation of him. In him. If you're grounded in the Lord Jesus Christ and your faith is in him, he'll take care of the rest. And he'll, he'll meet you where you are and then he'll bring you to the next place. He'll teach you. He'll, he'll, he said, take my yoke upon me and learn from me. You start where you are. He'll take you from there to the next place. But he'll save you right where you are. He'll meet your need. I want you to stop saying you've got to have more faith. I want you to stop that. What you've got to say is, I've got to use the faith I've got. I've got to get in touch with the faith I have in Jesus. Because one little tiny sliver of faith in Jesus is more powerful than all the forces of this world. I'm going to say that again. One sliver of faith in Jesus Christ is more powerful than all the forces of this world. Just enough to say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Listen, that's that's where it starts. Uh, two yesterday in church, two precious, two precious students gave their lives to Jesus, and it, and I did not interrogate them to make sure they had all their opinions in order. I said, Look here, Jesus said, Come to me, and I'll give you rest. Or, Do you want to come to Him today? And they came to Him by faith. Now, whatever needs to grow in their faith is going to grow and they're going to get to the next place and they're going to they're going to grow and become disciples and, and they're going to do that but they came like little children and said Lord Jesus I need you Lord Jesus I need you and so um, you know that that's all it takes to start and then as you start he builds on it and grows you and so here's the thing what kind of things have you got in your life that need to be uprooted 
um, what are some mulberry trees that need to be uprooted? You need to speak to those in the name of Jesus. And it doesn't take a whole lot of faith. Use what faith you've got and just begin to believe. Begin to believe God. And, and so today, many of us believe in God and believe about God, but we haven't yet started believing God. And so there's, there's where the, the rub is. Do you believe God today? Do you believe that what he says is true? If you do, step out on it. Believe it. Step on it and stand on it and stay on it until something happens. And don't, don't back down. Don't give up because you hit some bumpy roads and, and things look like it's not going to work out. You keep going. Keep believing God and stand with Him. He's got you. You don't. You you got all the faith you need. You got all the faith you need. Just go with what you got, and God will bless the rest. That's the essence of this message today. And I and I want to pray with you right now and invite you, just to trust in Him today. I have seen for myself what He can do. I've seen what He can do, just with the smallest, sincere, genuine. Christ-centered faith. Now, I want to make sure I clarify. I'm not saying you can believe in anything and get results from God. No, it's in Jesus, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, who was crucified for our sins, risen from the dead. That Jesus of the New Testament scriptures, that Jesus, you trust in him, and you put your faith in him, and watch what he does. So what's, what's happening in your life today? What's happening in your life? Where, where do you need him to move in your life? And I want you to trust him today. And then whatever, and faith also means, listen, faith also means obedience. And so this is the other side of it. Faith isn't, if, if you just say, I have faith, but you don't have obedience, what you have is superstition. Faith must accompany, be accompanied by obedience because that makes it complete. Read James. James will tell you all about it. Faith without works is dead because it's it's only half faith. Real faith says, Lord, here's the need. Now show me what to do, how to step out in faith in obedience to you. So as you're praying in faith, ask God what your job is. God, how do you want me to respond in this? For example, Lord, save my marriage, you might say. Okay. God might say, okay, I will. Now go apologize to your spouse and drop that affair. You see, there, yeah, you see what I'm talking about, right? And uh, and so, uh, Lord, get these dark thoughts out of my mind, okay? Here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop watching horror movies late at night. And I want you to start filling your mind with my word. And I'll, I'll cleanse your mind. And I'll, I'll get rid of those dark thoughts. But you've got to step toward me. Do you hear what I'm saying? That faith isn't just whispering the magic words. Faith is calling on God. And then doing what he tells you to do. Now, sometimes there's nothing you can do but wait. That's fine. Then wait. That's an act of faith. Respond to God. Faith is not an opinion about God. Faith is a response to God. Will you respond to him today? Respond to him today. Let me pray with you. Father, uh, God, I know you're able. You have you've proved it so many times. You've proved it so many times. There's nothing you can't do. Now, God, I pray for those listening. Many are hurting. Many are facing needs and conflicts, fears, addictions, crises. And Lord, you've gifted them with faith. Now help them to use it. Help them to call on your name. And help them to step out in obedience wherever you lead. Bless their faith. Uproot those mulberry trees. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Go in peace.